the events of November 22, 1963 are etched into Americans' minds. The assassination of President John F. Kennedy on that day in Dallas has spawned countless books, movies, documentaries, podcasts, and more. But what about the car? That's right, lesser known is the background on the limousine that President Kennedy was riding in on that fateful day. And lesser known yet is that presidents continued riding in that very same vehicle for more than a decade after Kennedy was murdered in it. Let's dive in. The presidential limousine that President Kennedy was assassinated in was a 1961 Lincoln Continental known to the Secret Service as SS-100X. While it started out as just a regular stock model, the car received countless modifications to get it up to the standards needed for the President of the United States. The car was built at Ford's Lincoln plant in Wixom, Michigan in January 1961, the same month Kennedy gave his famous inaugural address. 1961 was a new model year for the Continental, with the car now featuring suicide doors and an egg crate grille. This particular redesign was originally intended for the Ford Thunderbird, but instead the Continental received the overhaul. The U.S. government became one of Ford's first customers for their new design. Hess and Eisenhart of Cincinnati, Ohio were responsible for the presidential modifications that the Continental received. They cut the car in half, reinforced it, and added three and a half feet to its length. Retractable mounts were added to the exterior for Secret Service agents. Two custom tops were made for the convertible. One was clear plastic and the other made of steel. Contrary to popular belief, neither were bulletproof. Also added were hydraulic rear seats so the president could be raised up to 10 and a half inches during parades. A custom built heating and air conditioning system with two control panels was added two radio telephones, interior floodlights, folding auxiliary jump seats for extra passengers, two flagstaffs with accompanying spotlights, flashing red lights and a siren, dark blue broadcloth lap robes with gray plush lining and hand-embroidered presidential seals located in special door pockets, a blue mouton rug in rear, and indicator lights for when the door was ajar. In 1963, the car's grille was replaced with the grille from a 1962 Lincoln model, and they also added sombrero-style wheel covers similar to those on a 1957 Lincoln Premier. The car was delivered to the White House for use in June 1961. Interestingly, Ford retained ownership of the car but leased it to the U.S. Secret Service for the price of $500 per year. The retail price for the standard Lincoln prior to modifications would have been $7,347. After customization, the car was reportedly worth $200,000, which would be around $2 million in 2023 dollars. So what happened to the car after November 22, 1963? Well, immediately after the assassination, the car was impounded while evidence was collected. Then, and perhaps surprising to most, the car was sent to Cincinnati, Ohio for renovations as the plan was to actually return it to service. Now, you might be asking yourself, why on earth would this car continue to be used after the horrific events that transpired in Dallas? Good question. Well, the simple answer is that the belief at the time was that it would take too long to build an entirely new limousine from scratch, probably multiple years, and it would be more cost-efficient to renovate the existing car that was not even three years old. A group of six people from the Secret Service, Army Materials Research Center, Hessen Eisenhart, and Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company came up with a renovation plan that was approved by the White House in mid-December 1963. Codenamed Project Quick Fix, or D2, the renovations were completed by May 1, 1964. Following extensive testing, the car was delivered back to the White House in June 1964. After renovations, the car was reportedly worth $500,000. The renovation costs were shared by the federal government, Ford, and some of Ford's suppliers. In 2023 dollars, that would put the car's value at over $5 million. After his election in November 1964, President Johnson used the revamped X100 for his inaugural parade 
in January 1965. So what was added to the car? The rear passenger area was completely revamped and rearmored, complete with new trim to replace areas that were damaged during the assassination. A permanent top was installed on the car, complete with transparent armor. A new engine was installed that had approximately 17% more power. New electronic communication instruments were installed. A second air conditioning unit was installed and located in the trunk. And the car was repainted a color that, according to a May 1964 report, was characterized as, quote, regal presidential blue metallic with silver metallic flakes that glitter under bright lights and sunshine, end quote. The car underwent one more major renovation in January 1967, where additional modifications were made to the air conditioning, right rear passenger door, and other cosmetic and load-bearing changes. There were other small changes to the car over the next decade, most notably during the presidency of Richard Nixon, when the roof, which previously had been one large glass piece, was replaced with a roof that had a smaller glass area and a hinged panel that the president could open so that he could stand up in the car during parades. The X-100 was ultimately retired in early 1977, meaning that it was used following the Kennedy assassination by Presidents Johnson, Nixon, Ford, and Carter. For the last 10 years of its time in service, the car was not the only presidential parade vehicle. New presidential limos were delivered in both 1968 and 1972, leaving the X-100 for only occasional use. If you'd like to see the car today, it is viewable by the public at the Henry Ford Museum in Michigan. It looks as it did at retirement in 1977, meaning that it doesn't bear much resemblance to the car that was used in Dallas in November 1963 due to all of the rebuilds and modifications over the years. Most of the car's parts from the Kennedy years that were removed were destroyed as the government was trying to prevent black market trading. That said, the original windshield that had damage from gunfire in Dallas is located in the National Archives. When it comes down to it, the car was simply too new and too valuable to discard after Kennedy's assassination, despite the tragic legacy that it already possessed. President Lyndon Johnson, who was part of the motorcade on that fateful day in Dallas, reportedly hated riding in the X-100, and it's not hard to imagine why. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.